Welcome to Vote Pro Podcast, the award-winning cannabis news podcast brought to you by VotePropot.com. Here are your hosts, Phil Adams, Jay Breton, and Andrew McCready's. Does more cannabis equal less opioids? Well, we're going to find out, aren't we? Weed Maps has their initial public offering, and uh, what will that mean for the cannabis industry? And what is the most effective way to absorb cannabis? You may be surprised, or maybe you won't. Thanks uh, for joining us once again, ladies and gentlemen. We're glad to have you here on this episode of Vote Pro Podcast. Uh, I'm here with my buddy Jay. What's up? How you doing? Andrew's off once again, but uh, we expect him back next week, probably. Yeah, I think it's a good shot. He'll be back next yeah. week. Yeah. We, we, uh, uh, Phil and I have been sitting here bullshitting for the last hour before we started and drinking. And yeah. Now, I don't know about yeah. doing this. Just, just making up <laughs> shit. You know, I got really. a little buzz going on right now. So, so. you know, but we're not making up shit here for, nope. for this is real stuff. And, and we're going to get to all of this stuff. But first, I have the but first article right here. But first. But first, um, Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer said in an interview this week, that the folks up on the Hill, meaning the folks in uh, D.C. in the Senate in particular, are uh, moving fairly quickly. And what they're doing is kind of merging together a bunch of different cannabis legalization proposals uh, to put together a bill that will end the federal prohibition on cannabis, and we're talking about in this session this of Congress. This is crazy, man. This happened That's so right. fast. Wow. It's happening fast. They're not wasting any time. And, and I think they, you know, they want to get this done so that everybody will like them. <laughs> Don't we all? <laughs> well, yeah. You know, we all They're want people to right? like us. They want to be loved. Um, they want to be invited to the cocktail parties and down in uh, K Street, you know. <laughs> right? The ones we don't get invited to. <laughs> oh, please. And I wouldn't go if they did. Well, no. I might. He, they, they really want to get this passed. And uh, so what are they looking at? They're looking at, first of all, the Moore Act, the Marijuana Opportunity Reinvestment and Expungement Act. That's the one you will call that passed the House last year. Died in the Senate, right. but Schumer and the Senate Democrats and some Senate Republicans want to resurrect that. He also wants to combine that with his own version, his own proposal, called the Marijuana Freedom and Opportunity Act, hmm. um, and some other bills. Now, both of these bills incorporate uh, federal descheduling of cannabis, so none of this rescheduling nonsense, um, reinvesting cannabis tax revenues into communities that are especially hard hit by uh, cannabis prohibition. Mm -hmm. The drug Expunge war, yeah. All right, the drug war, expunging prior convictions for nonviolent cannabis offenders, which is important. Absolutely. And they're also looking at ways to prevent the Food and Drug Administration from imposing excessive new regulations on existing cannabis businesses. And Jay, we've seen that happen. Oh, yeah. Where, where in states where they legalize and then the regulators come through and add a bunch of new burdens yep. uh, on the cannabis companies and essentially regulate them uh, or legislate them right out of business. Yep. Um, so they want to prevent that. So um, so this is kind of important stuff. Wow. No kidding. Will they get that through the Senate, you think? I mean, um, he's got to wrangle up uh, some, some uh, Republicans to get it through. Well, I think there are enough... Uh, Demo I, I think there are enough Republicans and Democrats in the Senate to get something through. That'd be awesome. We'll see. He he said he wants to also allocate funds allocate funds to develop a cannabis breathalyzer. <laughs> to de I, and, and I don't yeah. know if that is a sop to to uh, law That's, enforcement or something indeed. like that Absolutely. to to detect impaired driving. Sure. Um, to get them on the side. Saying that you just yeah. shouldn't drive under the influence of alcohol. You probably shouldn't drive under the influence of too much of marijuana. Yeah, I agree with that completely. I agree, but but the breathalyzer. We we've we've done articles on the cannabis yep. breathalyzer, yep. and so far eh, it yeah. doesn't right. really work. Well, the problem is that that cannabis sticks in your system for way after you're no longer. That's right. Intoxicated by it. So well, we did an article a few months back about a company. I think they were out of Canada that had a 
product uh, that did some kind of test on an enzyme that's produced, and the enzyme has a a short half life or whatever it is, whatever you would call it. So the enzyme only lasts an hour, hour and a half. So there's there's hope on that with that. It was expensive though; it was like seven thousand dollars a a unit or something at this point. So what are they going to do? You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Every, every precinct gonna, yeah. is going to have one. Yeah, no, For I don't some, think so. To, to pull somebody to give them a ticket, I mean, it's yeah, right. Yeah, but, yeah. For something that's legal. You know, so, you're making it legal, right. but of course, driving is not no, no, whatever. No, and I agree with that. But so, so I think the important thing here, though, is the uh, the descheduling, right? I mean, that's really yeah, yeah. That's that's really that's it. the I home mean, run. I mean, that's the home run. That's we, and we've talked about this before. That's the main domino. You knock that down, they all fall. Um, and once it's once it's legal federally, then the Banking Act kicks in, and they'll probably have to pass a separate Banking Act, but. Um, that will get done. Yeah, I, I have a feeling. I think Republicans will be on board with that one without too much trouble. You know, right? Um, here's the quote from Schumer that caught my eye, and and I kind of wish that I believed this about him more, but I'll, I'll take him at his word. He said, "Quote: I believe in freedom. Let people do what they want." Well, hell, a freaking Louis. <laughs> you know, I'm glad to hear you say that, Chuck, and I, I hope you mean it. Yeah. Because yeah, let people do what they want. Let people live the lives of their choosing without, you know, undue interference by the government or any other powers that be. Right. And, and that, that uh, certainly, um, you know, is true. He said it became pretty apparent years ago that all these horror stories, you know, they legalized marijuana and crime will go up while states legalized and crime didn't go up. Um, so he, he's, he's seeing this part of it for what it is. And um, and and I'll I think that's a good thing at this stage, and let's see what happens. And it's 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 also a big plus for racial justice. Absolutely, um, we Criminal all justice. we all want that. Yeah. Criminal justice. We all know what the numbers say. Mm -hmm. So um, good on you, Chuck. Yep. Um, I hope that in this endeavor you are successful. It's going to be exciting to watch. And I I had a conversation this week with Steve D'Angelo, and we're going to get him on in the next couple of weeks. He's worked looking at his schedule because I'd love to hear what he says about this. You know, he really follows this stuff closely. So he does. Steve D'Angelo, you recall, is the uh, founder and I guess CEO of the Last Prisoner Project. That's right. All among about uh, criminal things. justice reform and uh, uh, really among being the kind of the father of legal cannabis Absolutely. in a way. What are the, you know? the grandfather of whatever? The grandfather <laughs> or the, <laughs> the right. great uncle once removed. <laughs> but uh, yeah, we love Stephen and we're hoping to get him back on very soon. Yep. Absolutely. So good news. All right. Send us your thoughts at votepropot.com slash contact or send us an email at podcast at votepropot.com and please give us a five-star rating on Apple Podcasts. If you'd like to be part of the show, call our message line at 240-257-2441. How about some business news? Business? Business. All right. Weed maps. So I don't know if you saw or not, but last month in December, uh, there was basically an IPO, for, which is a, you know initial public offering. But it's kind of a roundabout, and we'll get to that in a second, how they did that. Um, but the important thing here is that weed maps... Was, now remind folks what Weed Maps is. Weed if they Maps don't know. is a website. It's a platform, a, a, an internet platform, it, and I would kind of say it's something like Yelp in that people go on and they find people to buy from uh, cannabis and they rate them and so forth. Uh, so it, you know they don't actually sell it supposedly. <laughs> That's what they'd say, but the important thing here is that well, I believe them. Their valuation is one point five billion dollars. Okay, billion with a B. Yep. Billion with a B. So big company. W M Holdings is the company that is the the parent company of of Weed Maps. Uh, and the deal that they set up here is basically an acquisition with a company uh, called Silver Spike acquisition corp and what that does is allow it to go on the stock exchange now this is going to be one of the first cannabis stocks that i'm aware of to go directly to the american stock exchange you know it, uh nasdaq okay because you're it's it's very difficult for me to understand maybe someone can let us fill us in i've done some research Amer uh, american companies 
And Canadian companies that are in cannabis can't just jump on the uh, stock exchange in, in the United States because they are, if they are involved with what they call, in quotes, touching cannabis, which means processing, growing, distributing through a dispensary. None right. of those things are legal, so they're not allowed to do it. So, But you can still go get Tilray and Canopy Growth on some of these exchanges here. But what they had to do is register first in Canada. And, and be on ah. the, the, the Toronto Stock Exchange. And so then, that's what the Weed Maps parent company did? Well, the thing about Weed Maps is, see, that what makes them different and sets them apart is they don't touch cannabis. They're just a fucking website. They're just a platform. That's They're right. a platform. So they don't have that problem. It but, has to do with cannabis. It, yeah, but so does, you know. But, but and, and it tells you, basically, you find out, just like Yelp, where you can buy it, what you can buy, what who sells what. And, and they rate it. And a rating system. Yeah, right. Exactly. Um, so obviously their income is coming from where? Advertising. Okay. Right. So they have hundreds of millions of dollars income in uh, revenues in advertising. Now, this article that I'm looking at is from our buddy Kurt Dalton's uh, Cannabis.net by Tom Barkis. And he's, his, the title of his article is, Is Weed Maps $1.5 billion valuation the canary in the coal mine of the entire cannabis industry. Ah, so that's interesting. What he gets at is, you know, could this change everything about how we look at the cannabis industry? And let's back it up with some numbers here. Um, this is a cannabis website. It's technically uh, federally illegal, obviously, in the United States, but they had $439 million in revenue. This is Weed Maps between 2015 and 2019. Right. Um, which makes Weed Maps the most successful cannabis company in the history of the earth. <laughs> and they don't yeah. touch weed. That's what's fascinating right. about it, okay? Right. That's that's life in the information age, though, right? Right. It's it, just an information provider. That's all they do. They're uh, projecting sales of $210 million, uh this year. And that the way they figured that out, it's based on the Google rank and the internet traffic. Uh -huh. And that's without selling a seed. See, that's just selling <laughs> freaking advertising. So That's right, just selling advertising. And, and this is what uh, Tom says, who wrote the article. He says, that is devastating to the current cannabis model of investing and setting up a state-oriented cannabis business. The industry must pivot quickly and see the future of cannabis is a, a Shopify game. With internet traffic winning the orders, the state-by-state -state setup will be obsolete as some form of THC crossing state lines will be legalized uh, for market efficiency. So eventually, he's saying, we're going to have, you know, federal legality. You're going to be able to go across state lines. There goes your state setups. I hope so. Yeah, I hope so, too. Once that's allowed, and our guess is that the state licensed retailers in good standing with their state will be grandfathered in some way into the national selling program. The current model of brick and mortar dispensaries falls apart overnight. Expensive licenses, twenty million dollar build outs for the building, you know, for the right. for the brick and mortar, lawyers, the aggressive landlords, um, and it's all gone overnight. Because you know what it is? It's Amazon. It's Facebook. Yeah. It's Twitter. Yeah, I mean, what happens? Well, it, it it's it's it doesn't mean that brick and mortar dispensaries are going to disappear. Um, well, you say that now. But grocery stores don't disappear. No, bookstores but, don't disappear. But but, but look but in the malls. Still some, look in the malls. Look at this. But strip it, it's mall. that's right. It's not going to be what it was. It might be completely different in a very short period of time. But I think I think the first part that what you said is the most heartening thing to me. This whole um, vertical. Um, statewide the model allocation yeah. system that we talked about last time, <laughs> and and how that just breeds corruption. Right, that can't be dismantled soon enough. For right. my, I agree totally. You know? So what happens when these companies realize that they don't have to spend hundreds of millions of dollars statewide to build, you know, to build out and rent and and lease buildings? All they got to do is set up a website process the stuff and sell it on their website or you'll have websites like amazon or like weed maps that will eventually actually sell product too not right. just be a rating system but they'll sell but they don't have sell to, product but it just passes through and they get a piece of the revenue on top well i'm i'm looking at it in vis-a-vis -vis the alcohol industry there are still liquor stores yeah 
there and are beer and wine stores. So, you know, I go to the brick and mortar store to pick up my most of my liquor and beer and wine. But, well, actually not my wine, because I order all my wine I online. was just going to say that. that he, I he, just got a, a case of wine delivered the other day. He touches on that, Phil, in this article about how a lot of the brick-and-mortar wine stores and beer stores in certain states where, the, where it's legal are losing their ass and are really dropping off in revenues because they're competing with these companies that sell online. And once right. it's legal federally to sell alcohol online, which it's becoming now, um, yeah, and it's a matter of your profit margin goes away. Yeah, you know, I mean, it's the the brick and mortar is too too expensive way a way to sell alcohol, and it will be with weed. Well, let me I, ask I you right. this: if you had the opportunity, and you said you do with wine, but let's say you could go online and order a case of beer and uh, you know a bottle of uh, brown liquor and have it delivered to your house for the convenience. Well, I, I would do I, it in a heartbeat. I would do it, um, except that that um, you know, my when I go buy beer, it's right near next to the uh, the grocery store, and of course in California you can buy beer and liquor in the grocery right. store, and in Virginia so, uh, you can buy beer and wine in the grocery store. Yeah, right. So, um, um, but I like to support my local oh absolutely beer merchant. Absolutely. I like I like to support local businesses, um, and I know that they're not getting rich doing that. Um, but, uh, and, and once we're all let out of our houses, um, <laughs> right. I, I, I expect I'll be doing more of that, but you know what? I'll also be doing a lot more of ordering online. I heard that. Cause it gets delivered to your door. I do it all and, the time now. And you know, it's good. Yep. Yep. And, um, convenient, quick. Yeah. I mean, I, I haven't, I, I, you know, I haven't been in a in a store store other than the grocery yeah, store. The bird wine, me either. In ages. I don't even remember <laughs> the last time. I buy everything it, on Amazon. It's, it's all delivered. I jumped over to uh, our friend Motley Fool, and I looked real quick at a list of the top ten uh, market cap cannabis companies. You got number one Canopy Growth, GW Pharmaceuticals, Cureleaf, Kronos, yep. Aurora. Green Thumb, Tilray, Afria, True Leaf, and Harvest Health. Well, guess what? When when you when you compare that to Weed Maps at one point five, they're right in the middle. So they're in the top inside the top ten largest companies, and they don't touch weed. And they don't touch weed. That's the bottom line. <laughs> so Jay, yeah, we uh, have both had our. Uh, experiences with uh, surgery and pain management, and in my case, and I'm sure in your case, and I'm sure in Andrew's case, right. opioid use. Yep, I mean, absolutely. when something, when something is, when you've had something that hurts, uh, there's nothing like the opioids to kill that pain. But there's a problem with it. Yeah, there's a. I'm looking at an article here. Actually, this is right off Normal's website. Uh, opioid prescriptions decline in Canada following enactment of adult use marijuana legalization. The enactment of marijuana legalization in Canada preceded a market decline in the volume of opioids prescribed to patients enrolled in both public and private health care plans, according to data published by the Journal of Applied Health Economics and Health Policy. A team of investigators affiliated with the University of Toronto assessed the volume of opioid prescribed and the amount of money spent on opio opioids in the months immediately preceding the and immediately following the legalization of adult use marijuana sales. Of course, this is again right. in Canada. Right. Researchers obtained claims data for more than 80% of all the opioid prescribed in Canada during the study period from January 2016 to June of 2019. Consistent with the findings of other ecological studies, researchers determined the legalization of cannabis coincided with a marked drop in opioid volume prescribed in Canada. Wow. So yet another study that shows us that this really is a, and I'm making finger quotes, gateway <laughs> out of opioid use, cannabis. Right. Yeah. It's a gate. Marijuana is a <laughs> gateway drug, but not in the direction people said it was. Exactly. Right. I mean, right. Uh, you've got an article too about the U.S., right? Well, that's true. This is a study that uh, shows a significant reduction. Now, this study was published just this week in the British Medical Association's journal called the BMJ. 
or the bad mamma jamma, as I call it. No, that's not true. <laughs> and of course, now, Federal Agency for Healthcare Research and Quality is also conducting its review of the potential pain relieving uh, benefits of cannabis, mm -hmm. but uh, who knows how long that'll take. But this study um, showed a significant reduction in opioid related deaths, specifically deaths, okay. in areas of the US where there are more cannabis dispensaries. Now, what they did was they examined uh, opioid, opioid mortality, the number of deaths related to opioid use, and cannabis, legal cannabis availability in 23 states over a period of four years, 2014 to 2018. And uh, the researchers found that in those areas where the number of legal cannabis dispensaries increased mm -hmm. from one to two, so, you know, if you're in a place where you've got a local place that's got one and then out they've got two, right. the opioid-related fatalities dropped 17% overall. That's a significant drop. Hmm. Where you, When you go from th two to three, you get another 8.5%. So 25.5%, you know, decrease in opioid deaths. Wow. And of course, this is, not of course, but the, the, the study shows that this was strongest and this is not prescription opioids. This is um, all, uh, yeah, you know, yeah. licit and illicit use of opioids, including synthetic opioids such as fentanyl. I think that's an important distinction because so many of the deaths that occur with opioids are illicit. Yes. And a lot of it is fentanyl because yep. fentanyl is is just deadly poison. Yeah, I mean, right. it's, uh, it's, you get, you get uh, black market, oxycodones and oxycontins that are laced mm -hmm. with fentanyl and people just die because it's cheap yeah. the, the yeah. study said while the association's document cannot be assumed to be causal meaning that just because yeah, yeah. they correlate the doesn't mean yeah, right. doesn't uh, they suggested a potential association between increased prevalence of mm. medical and recreational cannabis dispensaries and reduced opioid related mortality rates they said the study hi highlights the importance of considering the complex supply side of related drug markets and how this shapes opioid use and misuse. Now, here's how I interpret this. People who are getting opioids, get them, especially illegal ones, they're doing it to get high. Yep. If they can get high legally with cannabis and safely. instead, and safely, they just as soon do that. What's wrong with Doesn't that? Doesn't that sound reasonable? Yeah, exactly. What's wrong with that? And and now we both know somebody who had, uh, you know, major surgery uh, and on a, a morphine drip for weeks. Yep. Weaned himself off of cannabis uh, 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 with cannabis. Yep. Um, and, and didn't have to to suffer through this withdrawal. Opium withdrawal. Right? Yeah. Yeah. So um, it, it's it's a thing, man. It's, it's definitely, a real thing. It's a gateway drug, baby. A gateway out. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> so uh, another article out of Cannabis.net uh, by Dana Smith here. Um, and it's a little quiz for you, my friend, Phil. All right. Let's see how you do I'm here. game. And it's about what's the most effective way to absorb cannabis. Uh, understanding bioavailability of different Bioavailability. Bioavail That's a scientific term. And uh, right. it's, it, it has to do it with means. how your body uh, incorporates any kind of substance that you put in it. In this case, okay. we're talking about THC, CBD, could be any other drug for that matter. Okay, so how do you do it best? You know, smoke it, drop it, shoot it, snort it, rub into your belly, whatever. <laughs> so, yeah, what we basically have is we have... With apologies to George Carlin, <laughs> the late George Carlin. <laughs> yeah, we have uh, capsules or edibles. We have uh, okay. smoking, you know. Obviously, smoking. You've got vaping, uh, yep. which is kind of the same as smoking, but it isn't. You've got the sublinguals, you know, the tinctures and the drops and so forth. Right. And then you've got topicals. So, knowing those are the your choices, what would be your guess? Which is the okay. most efficient way? Most efficient. Yes. Now we say effective or efficient. Uh, They're two different things. Okay. Well, you're making me look stupid because I thought there. What is the you, <laughs> which which will get you the highest? Which has the best bioavailability, asshole? That's which what? has the best? <laughs> okay. All right. Well, asshole, I think is the way. 
<laughs> you do okay. So uh, I suppository think, I think is where we're going here. Rectally. <laughs> nope, that's not it. Uh, that's, oh, okay. that's not even Let's listed see. here. So that you're uh, not even listed. Okay, no. I'm gonna say smoking. Very good. Very is that good. right? That is all right. It. Yeah, and you know what's even better than smoking though, and it's really kind of the same as vaping. But let's let's go through it real quick here. So you've got your first. First, we talked about uh, ingesting edibles, uh, right. cookies, snacks, whatever you have there. Um, and before it gets into your bloodstream, you see, since the entire pro, it has to be processed by your liver. And since that whole process right. uh, takes a good amount of time, uh, that's why edibles take so long to kick in. Uh, it's, it's And they produce a different sort of effect. Yeah, they do, because the Psychoactive chemical effect. compound actually changes. Actually changes, uh, And right. we know about that. Um so, and then you've got your inhalation. Okay, so you got smoking. The most common okay. form, obviously, of ingesting cannabis has always been smoking it, right? Smoking flour. And this method uh, is quicker. You know, it gets right to you. You feel it pretty quickly. Yep. Um, and uh, compared to edibles, anyway. One study assesses the bioavailability of cannabis when inhaled at about 18%. Um, other, okay. Another study, though, that was done on vapor rising, you know, uh, it actually went up to 40%. So wow, vaping okay. mo may be the most so efficient. that's twice as much. Yeah, going backwards, when you look at ingesting, you're looking at 4 to 12%. So smoking is about 18%. Vaping is uh, as high as 40%. Then you've okay. got your sublinguals, your drops and stuff. And they actually are ingested into your body a different way. They go through the mucous membranes the in mucus your mouth. Right. right. So they don't go have to go through your stomach, and they don't have to like the suppository. go through your lungs. <laughs> right. <laughs> So, uh, do they even make such a thing? I don't think so. <laughs> you seem a little obsessed with the whole rectal thing right now, my friend. Let's back away from that. <laughs> You've been alone in your house a little too long with this COVID all thing. Right, all right, all right, all right. All right. We're done with that. Uh, so, the sublinguals at about 15 to 25 percent, the drops. That's the uh, bioavailability. So, all right. I think we lost everybody that's listening right now. They're yawning. <laughs> what the hell are they talking about? <laughs> well, no, this is this is a tip. If you if you want to most now now let me ask you this: when you um, now you don't smoke flour very often. I I, I don't I a lot. No, I don't. I okay. vape. I do like vape. you vape. Now, when you vape, how long before you're feeling the full effects of the of the vape? It's quick. I mean, with two three minutes. Yeah, five minutes maybe. Uh huh. Five minutes. Three minutes. Yeah, that's. Fine. I I found whether I'm vaping or smoking. That it's as much as fifteen minutes before I'm really feeling the full effect. Yeah, I think that's about right. I mean, you feel yeah. a little bit right away within you a couple. You feel minutes. a little bit right away. Well, right. Couple, but but uh, I I'll, I'll smoke some, and then like fifteen minutes later, if I've had a lot, I'll be like woo. You know, that's <laughs> that's when I get the woo. Yeah, you know, yeah, definitely, definitely. Well, I noticed with edibles, and I've read some articles in this too. There's a huge difference depending on whether you eat beforehand or with it or whether you have an empty stomach you right and as we've discussed before whether you eat with fatty foods exactly uh, it's, uh, because that absorbs better um sometimes if i have an empty stomach and i have an edible i don't even feel it and then yeah. if i have it with a big old greasy cheeseburger and a milkshake i'm like Ching! and then about an hour 15 <laughs> yeah, minutes hour right. and a half later that's when you get that whoo <laughs> I like that. Like, Whoa. Whoa. Yeah, like hello. Yeah, hello. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> so that's uh, that's your science lesson for the day, my friend. Well, golly, Mister Science, <laughs> <laughs> from the basement of the science building. <laughs> Well, we would sure love to hear any uh, ideas that you folks have about um, ingesting, vaping, sublingualing, if if I may <laughs> coin a verb there. I like it. <laughs> sublingualing. Sublingualing. Please get in touch with us. We would love to hear from you. Go to votepropot.com. Send us a message. Go on Apple Podcasts. Um, and if you feel like it, and if you think we deserve it, give us a five-star rating. But really, what do we want you to do? Tell some friends about this. Spread the word. Word of mouth is still the most powerful force in marketing, and, and you sure would help us, yourself, and the people around you. And uh, and and I'm a little frightened to think about what's going to happen to Vote Pro Podcast when everything is legal. Right. What are we going to do? What are we going to talk about? We'll have to start another podcast, yeah. It's going to be it's going to be past <laughs> tense. It's going to be voted pro podcast. <laughs> Send us an email at podcast at votepropot.com. And we have a message line. We've got a shit ton of mugs that say vote pro podcast on them. If you uh, leave us a message, 
we will send you a mug. Just send us an email afterwards and tell us what your message was and where you live, and we'll send it your way. And to get all of the information that's available from us, you really need to check us out on social media. So go to Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and LinkedIn, and just do a search for Vote Pro Pot. 